I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I've never really been the biggest fan of King. I've loved Alex Hirsch's voice work for him, and he's always been enjoyable, but he was rather surface level most of the time. His shtick of being the King of Demons had gotten really tiring by now, and it needed to end. Which is part of why I love this episode so much. It made me invested in a character I didn't care much about, and it fixed King into someone I could actually get invested in. The episode starts with King once again going on a tangent tantrum, while Luis discovers an invisibility glyph. Lilith presses X for doubt, and King takes that personally. In an effort to prove them wrong, he takes them to his mighty cinder block. Lilith and Hootie find their new god and beg for forgiveness, leaving Luis as the closeted skeptic. A goo monster attacks them, but Ida comes to save them. She drops potion bombs on the monster, and she drops truth bombs on King. No, 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 no! <laughs> no! The monster takes it a bit better. Luce goes to cheer King up, and is able to eventually motivate him at the prospect of finding out some more lore. Hootie becomes a cannon, and they fly into the origin of King's birth. This is where King accomplishes what no one else has ever done, remembering his birth. I guess he just kind of built different. He gets some new drip, and we're left with the mystery of who King's dad is. As I said earlier, I used to find King to be rather one note. He was always just the self-proclaimed King of Demons. But this episode uses that. If being the King of Demons is all that he has, what happens when he loses that? What's even left of King at that point? Then there's the question of whether it was right of Ida to tell him this now. Should she have ever told him the truth? Should she have been honest the whole time? These are all questions the show leaves the audience to think about, and it doesn't answer any of them. Because that's the point. It's to give people something to think about, and to make their own decisions on. It's a very similar dilemma to what foster parents deal with. Are you honest from the get-go, or should you wait? And if so, how long do you wait? Ida obviously meant well, she just wanted King to believe his origin was something to be proud of, rather than something pitiful. And again, the episode doesn't take a stance on whether Ida told him at the right time or not. She just promises to not keep more secrets. Which, while not the biggest step forward, is still a step forward in her arc nonetheless. It's not easy to change an entire character completely in just one episode, but this episode pulls it off with flying colors. In the span of the 22 minute runtime, King goes from an attention-seeking, narcissistic kid who believes he's the king of everyone, to just being a scared kid who wants to find his dad. And it's not jarring. Instead of there being one moment where someone calls him out and he just goes, Wow, I never knew I was being such a jerk. I'm sorry. He changes once he finds out that everything he believed was a lie, and it sends him into a breakdown. Which is what I want to cover quickly next. Voice acting is a very underappreciated side of the industry, and that's why I want to call attention to the great voice acting present here. Let's analyze the phases of King's voice in this scene. 1. Sad and slightly betrayed. You don't believe this is my castle. 2. Angry and accusing while building fear and sadness. Y you're lying. 3. Slowly realizing the truth. My life. 4. Revulsion and anxious. No! Keep that thing away from me! It's messing with my head! 5. Extremely paranoid and heartbroken. Y you're all just making fun of me like usual, right? And then 6. Basically this entire clip. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to do, Luce. I can't tell what's real and what's fake. Alex Hirsch really just nails these scenes. And the rest of the cast isn't slouching either. Sarah and Wendy really do a good job at conveying how scared and sad Luce and Ida are. They're able to convey strong emotions even without a giant mental breakdown. And that's a common thing for the episode. It accomplishes a lot with something simple. This episode has a simple yet effective plot. It changes King's whole character and leaves him with an uncertain future in only 22 minutes. And that's why I don't have much to say. It's simply a strong emotional episode of the show. I don't have any new video recommendations as of now, so I'm just going to link a playlist I found of a bunch of great video essays. That's all for now, folks. See you next time in Keeping Up Appearances.